guys, um, I had no intentions on doing this video. Actually, let me turn the air down a little bit so you guys can freaking hear me. And I'm already going to apologize right now. I'm not wearing my seatbelt, so you're going to hear the ding, ding, ding. So, anyway, just get used to it. Anyways, so, um... I had no intention in doing this video, but this video has been requested many, many, many times and I've been wanting to do it and I couldn't think of a more fitting time than to do it right now. So this is totally spontaneous, guys. Right now, Clint and I, well, I actually go, I'm about to go pick up Clint right now. Um, we're heading to the movies to go watch X-Men. Cannot wait, X-Men Apocalypse. So uh, yeah, um, in the comments, if you guys have seen it, let me know what you guys think. Anyways. Um, so yeah, and I've been talking to Clint because guys, if you don't know this already, Clint is like, he's my coach, he's a keto, he was my keto coach, he still is my keto coach, he knows everything about everything, and so a lot of my knowledge and all the experience that I've, I have has come from him. Uh, really, anytime you guys ask me some tough questions, I go to him like, hey man, so-and-so asked me this, what do, you, what do you think about this? And uh, he goes and breaks it down. So he actually has no clue that I want to do this Q&A with him. So. Uh, when we pick them up, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise, but it's going to be perfect because the movie theater that we're going to is about uh, about 15 minutes away, which is perfect amount of time to do a Q&A. Uh, so I'm going to act like you guys. I'm going to be asking the questions. He's going to be answering them, and then we'll go from there. So hopefully we answer all your questions. If we don't, leave, uh, leave your questions that we didn't get to in the comments below, and then we'll do another one. So uh, yeah, let's go pick them up. He sees the camera. Look at that timing. Yeah, I know. I, I, I thought you were waiting for me at the window. No, no, no. All right. Just got out the shower. Oh, nice. All right, man. So I've totally put in you on the spot right now. <laughs> so I said, all right, I'm going to go pick up Clint. It's about a 15 minute drive. Here's a perfect time to do our Q&A. I said he has no idea, <laughs> which makes it better. So uh, I just fucking wing it, right? Just, just wing it, just and wing uh, shit, I'm man. gonna act like them, and I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna ask you all the questions that I I've been getting asked lately. Okay. So uh, if you need to take care of any calls or anything, take care of them right now. All right. Are we live right now? Yeah, we're live. Go ahead. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first question that I get asked a lot. Let me fix this shit so it doesn't come down. Okay. This is like the number one question. How do I know I'm in ketosis? That's a good question. Um, well, so it all depends on how long you've been doing it um, and what your macros are like. The way that I can tell that I'm in ketosis is first of all, you feel like shit after that third day if you're just starting. Until after that third day. Okay, that's a good sign. Um, you'll, out of nowhere, after you feel like shit, for about three days, if you're working out hard three days, if you're not training hard, it's gonna take a week. You'll have a headache, you won't have any energy, and then, boom, you, you feel better. You have energy, you're, you can think, you're not hungry all the time. That's a good sign that your body has switched over. You've started producing enough acetone and beta-hydroxybutyrate and so on to fuel your brain because your brain can't use. You're not producing enough glucose for your brain and so you're foggy. Um, for me, when my BHB levels get up above one millimolar or if I'm over the tray, if I'm at like the trace levels on the keto sticks or anything like that, my urine smells sweet. Uh, it bubbles up in the toilet. That's always a good sign for me. I don't know why that is, but it is the case. Uh, there's a definite odor to it. Yesterday, my planner walked into my office and said it smelled like nail polish remover. Uh, I have to assume that was acetoacetate in my breath. Uh, you'll notice things like that. You won't, at first, at least after the first week, you won't be able to go, you'll start flattening out, you won't be able to go real hard for real long, but damn, you can walk forever and you don't get hungry. That's another thing is keto, when you're in ketosis, you're, you got some significant appetite suppression. Okay, that's a good, that's a good Or sign. you could go out and buy the test strips. So the How do you feel, you okay, and I get asked that question all the time, about the test strips. How do you feel about those? Are they accurate? How accurate are they? And are they a good tool to use when you're when you're doing the keto diet? They're a good tool to use. Uh, they're an inexpensive tool to use. So the, your, the, your, the, the urine sticks, uh, they test for the levels of acetoacetate. 
uh, that's the uh, the ketone that's going to be passed out in your urine. Now, keto nutritional ketosis is a term that everybody throws around, and that's when a lot of times I'll see folks ask you questions and they talk about your ketone levels. They're talking about beta hydroxybutyrate. There is a correlation between beta hydroxybutyrate levels and acetoacetate levels. Uh, you can look up the studies if you want, or you can take my word for it. I would suggest you look up the studies, but. You can, uh, you can find the studies, the correlations, and it's happened in 2014, 2015, and even some in 2016 where they've looked at this to see the, 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 uh, the correlation between the two. If you're at trace level on the keto sticks, then you're passing ketones in your urine. Your beta hydroxybutyrate levels are probably at a nutritional ketosis level from what I can tell. Now, I, I have an Abbott precision monitor where I can test my blood. And I have, I've had the strips, and it's accurate. Now, I'll be at a half millimolar and show trace, and I'll be at one and a half millimolar and show trace to small. Uh, that's the same range I've seen on the peer-reviewed studies that have come out and so on. And they did some of it on cattle, they did some of it on people, but the point is, uh, I think they're accurate to a degree. And those are $11 for about 100 of those tests. So that's not bad. Go right. and get them. Go and get them, where you're going to spend 10 bucks every time you prick your damn finger to draw blood. Yeah. Okay. If your protein's under control and your carbs under control, then you're not, you don't really need to worry about spending 10 bucks to draw, you know, to, to check your yeah. blood levels unless you're, again, doing it for epilepsy or Alzheimer's or some other stuff. What is a good starting point for keto? I get tons of people say, hey, I want to do keto, but I don't even know where to start. Where do I put my macros at? What do I do? How do, what, how do I find out where to, what's a great starting point? Or how would a person that wants to start keto go about finding his starting macros? All right, so the easiest way, most of your your viewers are, um, they're training, they're athletes. Yeah. They're, most of them are weight training. And so the first thing I would do is figure out what your minimum protein intake should be. And that's going to be at 0.8 grams to 1 gram of lean body mass. And so if you don't know what your lean body mass is, you need to figure that out. Um, so set your protein intake at, at, at 1 gram per pound on the maximum level of LBM. Uh, at least to start, and I'll get into that in a second, but start with one pound of protein per lean, per lean body weight. And so if you're uh, 200 pounds and you're 20% body fat, you've got uh, 40 pounds of fat, that's 160 grams of protein a day. Trust me, you're going to be fine. So you immediately, that's your, that's your protein intake, so 160 grams of protein a day. Now, if i gotta, I got to type this in. I wasn't expecting a, a quiz when I got in the truck. So at 160 grams of protein a day, we're looking at 640 calories. Um, that needs to be about 25% of your calories, 20 to 25% of your calories. So for a 200 pound person, we'll probably put them at about 2,500 calories. Once you know your protein, find your caloric intake. So if you want to go lower, then you make that, you know, you make that number 25% of your total calories. If you want to go higher, you make it 20% of your total calories. Uh, then you're going to get 5% of your calories from carbohydrates, period. And you can stay lower than that if you want, but 5% uh, of your, your, your calories from uh, carbs. So if you add the 25% and then the 5% and you're at 30, the rest is from fat. If you really train hard, and I don't mean you think you train hard. I mean, you really train hard, you're not recovering, and you want to up the protein, Give it a shot, but you're going to need to get some keto sticks or something to make sure that you are producing enough ketones because protein is gluconeogenic. You will produce some glucose from protein. Um, I forgot the point that I was going to make when I said I'd go back into it, but the no, bottom well, line I, is, think, I think your next point was going to be, because I've been getting a lot of shit lately from people saying, oh... When I tell them my macros, yes, uh, they say you're not in, you're not, you're ever, you're never hitting ketosis. You're not even doing the keto diet because your protein's too high. So okay, and then that I go back and tell Clint, hey, Clint, they, they're telling me I'm not in ketosis. They're telling me that my protein's too high. What do you, what do you think about that? Am I technically doing the keto diet if my protein is over 160? Yeah, technically you are because you're to be defined as ketogenic. You just need 0.2 millimolar or higher. Okay, that's pretty low. Yeah, and I watched a video the other day. I want to bring this up. This is probably, this is probably not a question. This is actually one of my questions. Good, I'm going to get take a drink while you're saying A guy asked me, or I'd watched the video, and the guy said, I'm so sick of these people. They're doing these keto diets. They're, they're, they're misleading so many people. Their protein's too high. They're doing refeeds, because I used to do refeeds on my keto diet. And they said, 
they're so stupid, they get it, they're about to get in ketosis, they're, they're doing the almost keto diet because they're, they're about to be in ketosis and then they go and fuck it up by doing their refeed. So they're just so stupid and this and that and so I wanted to go and ask you, what would you think about that? Am I, was, was I doing the almost keto diet that every time at the end of the week, right when I'm about to hit ketosis, I go and do the refeed and screw it all up? All right. I get real tired of hearing comments like that. These fucking guys that are saying things like that, I'd be happy if I, if one of you were in the car, I'd ask you the names of the researchers that actually pushed the nutritional ketosis that you're calling the goddamn ketogenic diet. The cyclical ketogenic diet for bodybuilders has been around for a very long time. No, it's not the almost keto diet. Now, if you want to do a nutritional ketosis and you want to maintain beta hydroxybutyrate levels in your blood above a half to one or two or three millimolar for a length of time, that's a traditional ketogenic diet. If you have a kid who's epileptic and you want to help with their seizures, your doctor might put them on a ketogenic diet, 90% fat. Or an MCT oil supplemented ketogenic diet where you're really getting about 1.2 grams of fat per gram of protein and gram of carbohydrate. Well, wait a minute. They're eating a gram of carbs for every one and a fifth gram of fat. How is that ketogenic? Oh, because the goddamn MCT oil is actually producing ketones at a higher rate. There's ways to manipulate this thing. Okay, the cyclical ketogenic diet has been around longer than I've been alive. Arnold used it to win multiple Olympias. It's not, the guys out west, when they were doing everything that this new industry, I mean, the industry is a little different now, but the guys out west used that diet during the week and they carved up on the weekends. They got usually one day. Yeah. Uh, the key is they were hitting ketosis. It's not the almost ketogenic guy. They are hitting ketosis because they're training their ass off. So if you haven't read it yet, go find The Body Opus by Dan Duchesne. He's, he's dead now, but he wrote a book called The Underground Body Opus, and it was a cyclical ketogenic diet. The first few days of that diet were hell. The carb load sucked because it wasn't like the anabolic diet or some of these things where you eat whatever the hell you want. You train your balls into the dirt, and then you let somebody hit it with a hammer. You burn all the glycogen completely out of your body, and then before you're even allowed to think about doing a refeed, you have to go in and do a complete depletion workout. You're going to have to circle around. Yeah, you're going to, totally you go in and do a complete depletion workout where your muscles are primed for your refeed. And then Duchesne had you eating clean carbs every two hours until you spilled over, and then you stopped. So you are doing a form of the ketogenic diet because probably Tuesday you're producing ketones. So if I do the refeed, or if people are doing the refeed while they're doing the while they're doing the keto diet, so is that a form of keto diet? And can could you could I say yes? You're doing the keto diet. There are, there are three ketogenic diets. Okay. There's a standard ketogenic diet, which is what you're doing right now. Okay. Which There's is the one I'm doing, guys. Remember, I changed it up. I went, I, I I went to 80. Uh, 80, 20, what no, 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 no. you went about 70, 25, 5. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I, I was doing 50, So, standard 40. ketogenic diet. Ketones are elevated at all times. You're, you're not spiking insulin with anything except for protein, although protein will spike it. If you're in ketosis all day, every day, net carbs are always below 30, period. Okay. Then there's the targeted ketogenic diet. The researchers that are talking to you all about, I'm going to stop. The researchers that are talking to everyone about nutritional ketosis actually wrote a book on targeted nutrition. Okay. It's the TNT diet. The, the, they worked on the exact same thing. Now, that is a targeted ketogenic diet, and that's uh, you have some carbs before your workout, during your workout, and after your workout, and you, you exit ketosis for a little while. Okay. You train hard. Hard. I can't stress that enough if you're yeah. going to have carbohydrates. And then you're back in ketosis again that night. Um a little later on, yeah. the the, gly- the carbs that are left in your body and the lact the lactate that's left over after you go through and you cycle everything back and it, it'll get stored as glycogen. It's not going back as liver glycogen. It's going back as muscle glycogen. And this is a point that I want to touch on before I get too much further. You can store about 100 grams of glycogen in your liver. When that liver glycogen is empty, you will begin producing ketones. Your muscle glycogen levels can only be depleted if you're working that muscle. Period. You're not. When your liver glycogen levels are low, that's what matters. And so uh, the if you eat carbs around your workouts, or if you do a carb load like Duchesne said, which had no fruit because fructose restores your liver glycogen, not your muscle glycogen. Preferentially, it's going to store your liver glycogen because it has to be converted into fructose. Uh, I don't remember. 1,6-bisphosphate or some shit. It's been a long time since biochem. But the... Uh, 
your glycogen and your muscles will be replenished around that targeted ketogenic diet. So that's, uh, you can do that on training days, on some training days. Then there is a cyclical ketogenic diet. That's a extended period of keto with a refeed, depending on your body fat levels. Sometimes you can refeed every fourth day. You barely hit keto. That's That may be, I could say, every fourth day is the almost keto diet. Okay. But it works because we've done it with you before. Yeah, yeah. I did I did the four days and then five days and then seven days and two week days. Yeah, the three um, one is more carb cycling yeah, than anything. I just want to clarify that when people say, you're not doing the ketogenic diet. Okay, well, which version are you talking about, right? I mean, am I going in ketosis? At the end of the day, that's all that matters, right? It, it, depending on what ketogenic diet you're doing. Well, maybe. There are physiological adaptations that take place when you stay in ketosis for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. If you do cyclical keto, it takes three weeks to adapt to keto in a straight keto diet. Okay, that was going to be the next question people ask. How long does it take your body to get adapted to keto? To really adapt? Someone, I heard, I heard someone say six weeks. I've been uh, hearing that a lot. You can see, so you need at least two, but I would say about three. And then to fully adapt to keto, like if you're an endurance athlete, you're talking six months. Okay. So well, at that go, point, guys. though, think about it this way. So at that moment, at that, at that moment, when you fully adapt, you go from burning... At 75% of your VO2 max, and I'm not looking, I'm not prepared to, to speak on any of this, but say at 75% of your VO2 max, you're using, um, at, at, at that rate, you're using 60% fat before you go on to keto. So you're burning 10 calories a minute, 5 or 6 calories a minute is coming from fat, and the rest is coming from protein. You adapt to keto, now when you're exercising, you're burning 90% fat at that same heart rate. At that same level of exertion, you exhaust maybe later because you don't run out of glycogen. Now you're burning nine grams. I'm sorry, nine, nine calories of fat per minute and only one calorie of carbohydrates per minute. The other part about the adaptation period that, that's key that takes a while is your body can take the glycerol backbone of the triglycerides. So you've got glycerol and the fatty acid tails hanging off of it. Your body can take the glycerol. It's a, it's actually a glucogenic or gluconeogenic uh, compound as well. It'll take that, and it'll take 58% of the amino acids that you eat. So about, what, what do we call that, a little over half. So, you know, almost two-thirds of the amino acids in the protein are gluconeogenic. That's why the people that tell you that you eat too much protein, you're not on the keto diet. Yeah. Um, it'll take that half of the aminos, and so glutamine's a good example. That's one that will, will raise your blood sugar. It'll restore glycogen. Your body will get very efficient at making glycogen for your muscles and your liver from the gluconeogenic amino acids and the glycerol backbone from the fat, plus some of the lactate that's left over from the workouts mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Okay, when that change happens, you don't need a ton of glycogen, but you're going to build it up, and you're not burning that much during your workout because you're so efficient in storing it and holding on to it, right? You're not releasing yeah. it for energy. Yeah. Now, those adaptations that take place when you don't do cyclical keto, let's say you do uh, your standard keto for a really long time, you become really inefficient at burning sugar. Which is why some of you go on keto for a long time and then you, you start eating a lot of carbs. You fall back into that old thing because they're delicious and you've been so good yeah. for so long. You're so insulin resistant when you come off a keto diet, you may as well be obese. Now, yep. I'm going to get ripped for yeah. that. Yeah. A long-term ketogenic diet does cause some insulin resistance. You are less insulin resistant than you were if you had a BMI of 35 and you just lost 70 pounds. You're still insulin resistant. So you have to ease back into it. Yeah. When you come out of a standard ketogenic diet, you got to ease back into it. You can't go overboard. Um, you'll stimulate a ton of fat storage. So this is for guys that have just dieted down for a show because when you do it for a long time, your thyroid hormones can come down a little bit. You'll notice if you've been on keto for a long time, you're training real hard, you're cold. I've told you this before. Yep. When we were marathon yep. training, I was keto. And uh, I was cold a lot. Anyway, next. I'm sorry. <laughs> next question. Uh, will you lose muscle if... I Will I lose muscle if I do the keto diet? Am I going to lose muscle? Because I'm so used to eating carbs. I do the carbs. I do the if it fits your macros. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I feel so powerful on carbs and I'm growing on carbs. But I want to try this keto diet, but I'm scared to lose my gains. Am I going to lose my gains? you lose your gains if your calories are too low. you lose your gains if you're not training properly. You train heavy. Okay. You're going to lose your gains if you, um, you're not eating the right foods, right? You're spacing this stuff out. Mm -hmm. Um... You know that reminds me. We were talking about uh, we were talking about protein levels earlier, and so everybody says you're eating too much protein. So the intermittent fasting crowd tell you two meals a day. You mm -hmm. know, 
and uh, your protein's set at 160 grams of protein on the day, right, which is not too high. Let's yeah. say that, that that's for that 200-pound person. So they get two 80-gram of protein meals. A protein feeding that big will throw you out of ketosis for hours. It's too much, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So you got your meals have to be right. Will you lose muscle? Yeah, you could. Uh, the studies that I've seen, so Jacob Wilson's lab in Tampa has done it. Uh, now I'm going to say the researchers. Dom D'Agostino at South Florida uh, has looked at it. Jeff Volick and Steve Finney have looked at it, and you lose less muscle if you do real keto where you're actually looking at. You're not overeating protein, and you really are eating less than 30 grams of carbs a day. One of those little Splenda packets has a gram of carbs in it. Everybody needs to pay yeah, attention to damn that. damn those damn Splendas. They, they, you're looking at a gram of carbs from maltodextrin in one of those little packets. Um little shit like that adds up. It does. But if you're really doing keto... It freaking does. Because if you don't get... The reason why that, that you would lose less muscle with strict keto is once your body makes that shift mm -hmm. and the physiological adaptations take place and you start using ketones for fuel for your brain, yes. your body stops looking for glucose. Okay. Remember where I said you could get glucose. You could get it from leftover lactate, but remember that's going to be from a glycolytic pathway, so you had to burn some carb or something. You had to burn, burn glucose to even get it. Uh, from anaerobic work, right? Okay. Um, you can get it from the glycerol backbone and some fat, but only 10%, uh, uh, you know, only 10% of the fat, that you, the calories from fat that you eat, only 10% of those calories could make glycogen or they, they could make uh, glucose. And so your body's going to get it from the protein. And if you're not eating adequate protein, then your body's going to make it from muscle protein because your brain will use 20% of your total calories for the day, maybe 25, I don't know, some of you guys that are so much more intelligent than the rest of the YouTube community, um, maybe you need 30% of your cap. My point is, your brain's going to need glucose if you haven't made that shift where you're not producing ketones and you haven't adapted. So will you lose muscle? If you do it wrong, damn right, you'll lose muscle. Okay. When Good. you're on keto, a lot of stuff you'll see, and you guys need to do this research yourself, but you need to train heavy, and maybe you don't need to do as many reps. You're not going to have glycogen to step out into that eight over eight rep range, that 12, 15, 20 range. I remember, not always, that. I remember that. So yes, when you, so you're recommending people that are doing the traditional keto diet early on, early on to keep the reps somewhere between the six to eight rep range. Six to eight is fine. Cause after that, after that, you're getting into a glycolytic pathway. Now, do you remember when you did your video on your keto pump? Yeah. Okay. Do you, now, do you remember the first couple weeks when we put you back in keto? You couldn't have done the keto pump video because you were too damn depleted. Yeah, too flat. Right. But it's over time, flat. even though you were doing cyclical keto, over time, your glycogen yeah. levels started replenishing themselves. Even at the end yeah. of... The, this was the end. This was like the 10th day or something. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, yeah. 10th day, yeah. Once Every you have time to adapt, you can kick your reps back up. But in the beginning, you, you got to scale it a bit. Okay. So three weeks goes by, you okay. started adapting, and you'll feel it. Your muscles will feel full because what will happen is when you make that change, your brain's going to start using all those ketones that you're producing, and your muscles are going to start using inter intramuscular fatty acids. They're going to start using free fatty acids, and you're going to start storing fatty acids in your muscle. You're going to use that stuff for energy, and you'll start filling yourself, fill back out again from glycogen and fatty acid storage, and then you can kick your reps up. It's the intensity that matters. Okay. You can't go in there on keto and burn your ass out on cardio you'll burn your muscles up. But you'll do that anyway if you're not eating enough carbs. If The Rock wants to do cardio twice a day, let him. Look at his damn diet. He's eating 600 grams of carbs a day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and he's yeah, and he's doing cardio for like yeah, two hours a day. He's yeah, he's doing, doing cardio in the morning, cardio in the afternoon, yeah, or yeah, cardio in yeah. the morning, training yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. That's fantastic. Look at all the clean, 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 clean carbs he eats yeah. and all the protein that he eats because he's eating about two grams of protein per pound of body weight. We just said that 58% of that can go to glucose if he needs it, and he's eating 600 grams of carbs, 300 yeah. grams of carbs per pound. That works for his body. Yeah. He's incredibly insulin sensitive, but it's because, hey, he goes balls out. Yeah, exactly. You okay. got to scale it. Next question. Okay. Can I bulk on keto? Yes. Yeah, but it's it's harder. Okay. Yeah, let's explain that. Yeah, because I, I, I could tell people, I tell people yes, but I, I, in my opinion, I think you're better off bulking with carbs. It's more fun. It's more fun. Okay, so you're not better off. It's it's no. Equal. I mean, I think you. I think you'll have more success from what I've seen with people that I've worked with and what I've seen personally. There's not a ton of research on it. There's a lot less research on bulking on keto. Yeah, you gotta, there's not. Very, there's there's not. There's I, I, it's hard to find people that bulk on keto. It's always people that are cutting, 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 cutting. You have trying to lose so weight. to bulk on keto, you need the same adaptation period. You need that same exact adaptation period because you need glycogen in those workouts, right? Okay, yes. The reason why it's so easy to bulk on carbs is because you have a ton of glycogen you can work off of. You're going to swell those cells up. You're going to bring in satellite cells. You're causing 
muscle damage and tears. And that's just for the workout. You can work out more intensely. Yeah. I'm telling you all right now, if you haven't done keto, the first three weeks training on keto sucks. Okay, suck. And yeah. that makes it difficult. And, I, and we just said that you need six months before you're really efficient. But if you're long-term on keto, then uh, you can... Tim Ferriss had a guy on uh, not that long ago, maybe been over a year ago, but I'll get, I'll get out in a second. If you're long-term on keto and your body is synthesizing glycogen from all sources, then yeah, you can bulk on keto. And the longer you do keto, the more protein you could let go because your body's producing ketones so efficiently. So that's why I'm saying at, at first you go a gram per pound. If you catch yourself losing strength and size and you are eating enough fat and everything else, then you can kick the protein up a little bit. Yep. But the longer you do keto, the more, adapt, the more adapted that you get and the better off you get at producing ketones. You can back off that protein number if you want. Uh, which is what we've done with you. Yeah, yeah, we backed it off. We backed off. So the uh, Tim Ferriss podcast, if you don't listen to Tim Ferriss, you should. Uh, Tim Ferriss had Dominic D'Agostino on it. He's a researcher. That was the guy that's at University of South Florida. Uh, he had a pretty good little aside. Now, his is more cancer research, but he had a pretty good uh, he had a, he had a, a comment. And the guy uh, used to eat carbs like everybody and so on. He's been keto for a long time, at least mm-hmm. at the time that they recorded that podcast. He fasted for... Shit, I don't know. Seven days, three days. I don't. It doesn't matter. None of us on this that are watching this fasted longer than a day today. He Hell fasted no. for a number of days, and then he went into the lab and or into the gym before he went into the lab, and he deadlifted 500 pounds, I think, 10 times. So, can you bulk and get strong on keto? Absolutely. The reason why it's so much easier on carbs is because your workouts are insane because you get motivated. Doesn't a pump motivate you? Yeah, yeah. You know, you get so, your arms get so blown up, you can't pick them up. The other thing is that insulin response after your workout. Insulin's an incredibly anabolic hormone. It'll make you fat and it'll make you big and it'll make you strong. Your insulin levels go up, your veins start popping out. Uh, it's, it's different. You can get an insulin response after your workout if you get a really fast digesting whey protein. You can get a whey isolate, ISO 100. You can, my protein's got a whey isolate. You need to hydrolyze stuff. You need stuff to digest quickly. You can get a similar insulin response with a very fast digesting protein. Yes. When your insulin levels are raised and you got triglycerides in your blood, you're going to store some of them. You're going to store some of it. Okay. It, can BCAs, can protein um, knock you out of ketosis? Yes. So uh, a couple things. The uh, insulin will drive ketone levels down. Mm-hmm. All right, leucine raises your insulin levels in a similar manner, which is why we talked about the pre-digested the, 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 the proteins. The amino acid leucine is a ketogenic amino acid. It cannot convert to glucose. Leucine uh, is one of the branched chain aminos. It's the most important. It's the one that would stimulate the mTOR pathway and actually signal growth. Um, when your insulin levels go up, your ketone levels are going to go down. That's one. Okay. Two, isoleucine and valine are either ketogenic or gluconeogenic, depending on what your body needs at that point. Mm-hmm. They can do either one. They're, they're, they, they go both ways. Uh, you had a, I had a girlfriend in college. You know, they, they, either side, right? Um, let's not let Julie and Crystal maybe see that part. <laughs> I mean, it's, you had a what? You had a what? <laughs> the, um, the moral of the story is yes, because they can go, gluco, they can go gluconeogenic. Now... Uh, I drink uh, Salvation Extend. It's got two grams of glutamine in it. Glutamine is gluconeogenic. It's got gl in the damn name. Yeah. I mean, that amino acid will raise your blood sugar levels. And so, yes, they can knock you out of ketosis. Um, one of the things that you'll see, and it, there's not, it's not this exact. Everything that I'm saying, nothing is this exact. One of the things that you'll see is when your insulin levels are elevated, your fat use for energy is uh, it goes down, right? So your insulin goes up, using fat for energy goes down. Yeah. So you take, uh, that's why, like Jerry Ward on his blog, on his vlog, on his YouTube thing, he'll say the BCAAs will stunt fat loss in some of his clients, and he didn't understand why. You're bumping that insulin level up, and when that insulin yeah. level's up, you're going to blunt fat. Which is, and I'll be honest with you, and right. I'll be honest with you guys, that's, I stopped taking BCAAs. Right. On my, on my, uh, and if you guys watch my videos, you'll see me on the Stairmaster. I'm sipping my BCAs. And the minute you tell me that, yes, BCAs can spike your insulin and, and knock you out of ketosis, they could, and, and, it, and, it, and it might, and it might do it. I just said, all right, I'm done. I'll just drink water. I'll tell you what else they do, though. What? So about 10% of the energy that you get during that workout can come from BCAAs. Now, there's not much calories in your BCAAs. In fact, the labels are mislabeled. They say that there's no calories. But uh, they also can prevent muscle catabolism. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a winner. It's like okay, it's a trade off. Right. It's a trade off. Yes, I rather I rather 
Yeah, it is. It's. But you'd rather burn fat. I'm sorry to make yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, you're right. No, yeah, I'd rather burn fat than, than and I'll take the risk of burning muscle. Uh, yeah, I but guess. by by training so hard and by having your diet dialed in, you're yes. less worried about muscle. Okay, next question. Can girls do keto? Is it okay for girls to do keto? And uh, is it bad for girls to do keto? It's not bad for them, and it is okay. But women respond less uh, less desirably than men to keto. So okay. more women are going to struggle with keto than men. Okay. Good. I'm trying to think of some more, some like we got one last. The question. women that I've found that respond best to keto are those of you that store fat like a man. If you're not, if you're apple shaped. I have found that a woman who is apple shaped responds better to a low carb ketogenic diet. Everyone can respond to keto. Don't get yes. me wrong. Yeah. A pear shaped woman, because of the, if you're insulin resistant, you're going to store around your trunk, um, your torso. So, the uh, an apple shaped woman, you're going to store an uh, insulin sensitive, insulin resistant person is going to store it up top. Uh, the pear shaped folks don't respond as well. Everyone still responds. You just have to give it time to adapt. Okay. Um, but I've had uh, a number of women that just, they respond to it for a while and then it peters out and it's tough. Okay. Okay. One yeah. last question. Yeah. One last question. How long can I do keto? How long can I do the keto diet? Or how long, how long can I do it and how long do you recommend someone does the keto diet? All right. So there are, well, I say there are, there were, there, there were tribes of people in very cold areas of the world that could get fruit and grains two months. All right, guys, sorry about that. Our camera died, and we stopped at Bucky's, got us some beef jerky, so now we're back on our way to the movie. So uh, go ahead and pick up where you left off. So I believe where we left off. Uh, guys, you got to give me a second. Remember, the question was, it how was, long can I do the keto diet? That's what it was. So I was saying that... You uh, carbohydrates are not an essential macronutrient. All right, so if you're on the, if you're on keto for a prolonged period of time, you know if you start looking at your hormone levels, you're going to notice that some of your hormone levels change. Uh, the things you can measure: your testosterone, um, your free testosterone, uh, the unbound stuff, going to drop a little bit. You might see that your thyroid hormone production goes down. Things you can't really measure all that easy: your leptin levels are going to go down. Uh, over time, that's going to inhibit a little bit of fat burning. What I would say is periodize it. I don't think that there's a limit to how long the human body can survive on it because the whole reason that your body adapted to burning ketones for fuel is to get you through times of starvation because if you had to only burn glucose, you'd burn your muscle up in a few days and die. But if you've got water, you can live for an extended period of time. So I think you could do keto forever. Okay. This is me speaking with I mean, there no are, qualification there, to say that. There are people out there that, that, that stay in keto. They say they dump keto and they never go back. And they never go back. And they've been in it for years and it's fine. There's actually a zero carb website where they, they don't even like keto with the 30 grand. They go zero. It's meat only. No veggies. Um, so I'd say you periodize it because you're doing it for a reason. Right? You're doing it for yeah, a reason. Most maybe. people do it for a reason. Yeah. yeah so you, you, you do keto for a while after coming out of a show. Um, and you ease carbs back in, you know, you do keto to lose some weight, you do keto because you want to get into endurance training and you want to get your body better adapted to burning fat for fuel. Um, but I don't think there's a length of time. Good. But, uh, now is the last question. Can you drink alcohol while doing the keto diet? Yes. Okay. And, and it's okay. tell me why. Why is it okay? So you can drink, you can drink anything. What can I drink? Beer, well, liquor. So if you drink beer, that's a tough one, right? Because you know, when we watched uh, the the last uh, the, the Captain America movie, we were looking at getting some land shark beer. I looked it up; it was twelve grams of carbs. Yeah, too much. Beer. Too much. With Miller Lite, it was three grams uh, of carbs. Okay, so ethanol metabolism. So when ethanol is metabolized, uh, it enters the same pathway. And it has actually, caloric density, ethanol is about the same as fat. So the, the alcohol is ethanol. When ethanol goes in, I cannot remember my biochemistry, guys, but I want to say that it uh, is broken down into acetaldehyde or something like that. Anyway, it follows the same pathway as your fatty acid metabolism. You're going to get ketones from ethanol, not sugar. Uh, and that's key. I'll go into a deep level of ketosis because... Uh, 
uh, when, when I'm when, when I'm drinking alcohol because as you produce, as you get your some of the byproducts from the metabolism of ethanol will deplete your glycogen levels in your liver. I don't remember these reactions, um, but yes, you can drink alcohol. Go with spirits though. So you're doing your whiskeys, your vodka, your gin, stuff that doesn't have any added carbs into it. Uh, that's why, it's not why, but you know, uh, what's his face, uh, the Rob Wolf, the paleo guys, you know, they got that NorCal margarita where they're not adding a lot, of, they're not adding sugar to the thing. Um, you can do alcohol if you pee on the strips, you test your beta-hydroxybutyrate levels, you're going to go, uh, you're going to notice that your ketone levels have gone up. If, if you drink a ton, you could have some, a little bit of acidosis because you're, your blood pH changes that much because of the, the amount of, of ketones that you're producing uh, from the byproducts of the metabolism of the alcohol. You can't, you, your body can't clear it fast enough. Okay. All right, guys. So I think that's it. Hopefully, we answered all your questions. All right. uh, you got one more? Go ahead. Well, I have one thing. So I was really tough earlier about these keto experts out there. And I did everyone that was criticizing folks that eat too much protein and they're not really doing keto. And I've, I've, bantered back and forth with folks in the comments on some of Logan's videos about this ketogenic diets or ketosis in general is it's not a state that you're in 24 7 365 you, you go in and out of it as the day goes the adaptations that you're looking for will take place over time if you're consistent with it and so the almost keto thing that pissed me off just because the way that you said it I could just imagine the person on the video doing it hmm. Bear in mind that when you do this stuff, it's not a it's not a state that you just stay in forever. You're going to go in and out of ketosis, and if you do it long enough, your body will adapt to making more ketones. And that's key. If you do a cyclical ketogenic diet instead of that three-week adaptation period, you're talking double that amount, maybe triple, and so on. Uh, so keep those things in mind. It's all relative. If you do a keto diet and you get a lot of saturated fat, you're going to produce fewer ketones than if you ate a lot of monounsaturated fat. And if you eat a lot of MCTs, you're going to produce more ketones than anything. Well, it's because of the way that caprylic and cap caproic acid and the other, the medium, the, the, the shorter chains of fat, the way they metabolize, they, they go to ketones. Within 90 minutes, your ketone levels have peaked mm -hmm. with MCTs. And there's studies that show that unsaturated fat produces tremendously more ketones than saturated fat. With, with monounsaturated uh, polyunsaturated fat also produces more ketones than saturated fat, but you don't really need a bunch of industrial seed oils and shit like that.